All right guys, we're gonna be working on a project on the van today in the shop. This is a project that I decided to film because I couldn't find much information on it. What we're going to be doing is upgrading the stock transmission cooler and putting one that has a fan on it so that that way we can get more air across the transmission cooler, especially when we're going very slow up steep hills. The transmission cooler I was gonna be installing in my van was a Derail 13960 Hypercool. My van is a 1994 E350 with the 5.8 liter and the E40D uh, four-speed transmission. This is not a direct bolt-on, and if your van is newer or older, you may have some differences in how you can make this work. All right, first thing we're gonna have to do is get access to the front of the grill here. I can't actually pull my grill off because of my bumper. These brush guards actually get in the way, so I'm gonna have to pull the whole bumper off, which will just make the job easier anyways because it'll give me better access. But I am gonna put the new transmission cooler uh, right behind where like my winch is and kind of from here down. It's the best spot that I've been able to find to, to fit it. Now, being the fact that it does have its own fan, you can technically put these anywhere, and I've seen a lot of guys put them underneath the undercarriage. The reason why I don't want to do that with Sasquatch is, you know, going off-road, I'm always throwing mud and other debris up underneath the undercarriage, and I don't want that clogging up the fan and ruining the fan and then causing me a bigger problem out in the field. So I still feel like this best and safest place for this to go is directly behind the grill. Now my original thought for where I was going to put the transmission cooler, I thought I was going to have to just remove the horn altogether. It wasn't a big deal to me, I don't really use my horn that much, but in the end result, I was able to just relocate the horn over a little bit. Alright guys, so this is where we're going to have to start doing a little bit of figuring. Because of the thickness of this cooler along with the fan, um, there's not enough room to just fit this up in here and uh, have it all clear out so what i'm going to need to do is i need it to sit right about like that height um, but all the way of course back against the radiator or close to the radiator there's a place for me to mount to back here but there's not going to be any place for me to mount to up here so i'm going to make a bracket for that that will go between these two pillars here Problem is, this area here, I'm going to have to do some clearancing in order to get this to go up there because you can see I'm hitting it right now and it doesn't want to fit all the way up in there. So first I went ahead and cut away some plastic trim and I just used a handsaw for that. But for the metal piece of trim, I went ahead and used a cutoff wheel and I just trimmed away enough to where I could comfortably fit the cooler with the fan uh, between the condenser and the metal trim. So there was two metal brackets on the van that I was going to mount the transmission cooler between. So I was measuring here really quick to get that distance and then I was going to use those to bolt to. The bracket itself I just made out some 1HC channel and I just welded on some tabs so that I had a way to bolt onto the van. The next step I drilled some holes. I was going to need two holes in the bracket itself to hold the transmission cooler and then two holes in the tabs that I could bolt through the metal brackets that were on the van. After double checking to make sure everything was going to fit properly, I went and pulled the bracket back out, did final welding on it and also kind of cleaned up the ends on the metal tabs to make them look a little bit nicer. Then I went ahead and painted the part. I was also going to have to do a little trimming on the grill to get the fan to fix. So while waiting for the paint to dry on the bracket, I went ahead and got that done. So the next step was to assemble the cooler itself. The kit itself came with uh, several uh, different fittings, including barb fittings and some hose. All right, guys, well, that has everything all installed as far as everything mounted. Uh, we still have to hook up our wiring to the fan, and then, of course, I've got the transmission lines. But we finally got everything mounted and in place. Down below here, what I did is I once I kind of had everything positioned, I drilled in some holes and put in uh, rib nuts and used rib nuts to be able to bolt that in. 
Now I did put in some spacers between the metal trim that I uh, put the rib nets in and the transmission cooler only because I wanted to be able to pull the transmission cooler out a little bit because uh, there is a bit of a stair step here and I didn't want these barb fittings that I have that I need to hook in for the transmission cooler. I didn't want them too close or rammed up against this metal trim. So uh, the spacers worked out great and brought it out. So I've got plenty of clearance for that. So before putting the bumper back on, I went ahead and pushed on the rubber hose that came with the derail system. These just went on to barb fittings with some hose clamps. I then quickly put back on the front grill and then reassembled the bumper. I then disconnected the transmission cooler lines from the old transmission cooler and pulled the old transmission cooler out of the van. I caught up a chunk of the old transmission line and then adapted one of the compression fittings that came with the derail kit. This gave me an easy way to adapt the new rubber hose from the new transmission cooler back to the fitting that was connected to the radiator. All right, folks, well, we've got the transmission cooler now mounted and plumbed in. So the only thing we have left to do in this install is wire up the fan and get it to come on when we want it to come on. Now, the kit from Derail does come with this thermal switch that would have the fan come on at 180 degrees. Basically, you would have plumbed this into one of the transmission lines uh, going to the cooler, and then you would run a positive in from the battery and out to the fan, and then that way we, it would come on at 180 degrees when the oil going through here was 180 degrees. Uh, that's a, a good way of doing it, but I decided I wanted more manual control. I'm just going to put a simple rocker switch in the van. I have a transmission temp gauge in my van already, and I already know when abouts that transmission needs a little or the uh, uh, cooler needs a little help from the fan. And that's usually, like I said, when I'm just going very slow up a long, steep grade. And I'm not doing that all the time. So I don't really need that fan most of the time. And I'd say 95% of the time, the transmission oil stays plenty cool enough. I never have a problem. It's only those uh, times that, like I said, going up a very steep grade uh, at a very, very slow speed. So I'm just gonna put a rocker switch uh, in the van and uh, that way I can just click it on and off when I need the fan. All right, folks, well, we're out and about with the van and I wanted to re-upload this video because I wanted to address a concern that came up in the original video that maybe I should have talked about a little bit more and made clear what was going on. So the concern is uh, having the fan on the front of the cooler, okay? So stock or the way the fan comes, it is actually meant to pull air through the cooler. So in my uh, situation, the air, the fan would be blowing this direction out the front. Now, these fans are tornado fans. You can buy them individually from Derail or this one came as a full kit with the cooler and the fan. These fans are reversible. So all you have to do is switch the positive negative lead around and you can change the direction of the fan. So my fan is actually pushing air through the cooler into the through the condenser and and then through the radiator now the reason why i put my fan in front was just strictly ease of fitment okay it just was easier for me to set the system up this way so that's why i did it now talking to derail i called their tech support line just before i uh, decided to um, redo this video they said this works totally fine there's no nothing wrong with this type of installation they said there might be a minor uh, efficiency loss having the fan in the front but for the most part it is totally fine and from my experience now using the van uh, in Hell's Canyon where I had to drive up some steep grades at slow pace and then also I had to deal with some deep snow which is also another thing that can cause uh, the transmission to heat up I had no issues the fan worked great being able to flip it on and on as I needed it with the a rocker switch worked great and I'm happy with the insulation and it's totally functioning for me. 
So anyhow, guys, I hope that kind of clears that up a little bit and puts a little bit more information for you to understand. Now, one thing I do want to quickly point out, if you look at the instructions for these fans alone on Durail's website, they tell you that you need to take the fan shroud off and actually take the fan off, turn it around, put it back on in order to reverse it. But I called them and they said, no, you just need to switch the polarity on the positive negative lead and that reverses it and that's all you have to do. So I don't know why the instructions tell you that. That is a little bit misleading and somewhat confusing. I guess you can do it that way. That's one way to do it. But the easiest way is just to switch the positive negative around. So again, hopefully you guys found something useful out of this video. Uh, I definitely feel like if you have a four wheel drive van that's been converted, having an upgraded cooler and also having a gauge uh, that tells you the temperature of the transmission, uh, I think are two things that you should really consider and are often overlooked when it comes to these conversions. But this is not just for four-wheel drive vans. Uh, I think any overland vehicle where maybe you've added a bit of extra weight and you're going to be out exploring remote terrain, uh, th these are good things to uh, consider on those, on those um, uh, vehicles. So anyways, if you guys did find something useful, please leave a like. If you have any comments or questions, leave those down below, and we'll see you guys again outside.